Okay, cool. Well, we'll get started. Let's see if she can jump in. Intro to verbs. Start out uh, last week and the week before we did adjectives. You feel fairly comfortable with those. You understand the three different positions, attributive, yeah. substantival, and predicate. All right. Uh, same functions as, as English adjectives, which is helpful. And they're very... They're very much a, a context-determined kind of thing. You you have to know that it's an adjective, and when you know what which ones are adjectives, you can figure out how they're being used pretty quickly. Uh, they can get really advanced, so we might we might end up getting into some of that stuff. Uh, but everything we're going to see is, is pretty straightforward. Just predicate. Predicate or, or or attributive, excuse me. Uh, and you got the endings down, pretty good. They're mm -hmm. the same, yeah. same as your noun endings, so that's very helpful. Exercise nine. We'll go ahead and start going over that. All right. Part six. I need to come up with a new way of doing this so that all the answers aren't on the board as we're going over them. I'll have to give that some thought. Uh, so yeah, try not to look at the answers as you're giving me answers. Uh, start with the easiest one. Number one, agathon. Uh, genitive, plural. I put gender for any. Yeah. So you can decide. Um, exactly. So let's go form did that one, and then the meaning is good or useful. Okay, good. Uh, lexical form will always be the masculine, neuter, singular of the of the noun. So whichever one you're memorizing in your vocab, that's the lexical form. So okay. for agath agathos, is you throw the omicron sigma ending onto your adjectives, really, and that's your lexical form, usually. Uh, and yeah, good. Gender, you don't know because it's genitive plural. You'd have to have context to determine what gender it is. You have to see what noun it's describing, and that'll tell you the gender. So I just put masculine, because you can pick any of them. Good. Uh, which four didn't you get? Four words. Yeah, which four words? Okay, uh, oh, oh, from the, you're talking about tr translations. I thought you meant you didn't get four of the parsing. Oh, uh, no. Gross. I got all of them, but number two. I still like them. Kind of fine. Okay. Uh, Let's do number two then. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Give me guesses. What did, What do you know for sure from it? I know it's uh, accusative. It's plural. And it's feminine. Um, let's perform. I assume it's the uh, male singular right. form. And then I didn't get the meaning. So. It's pistos, which means faithful. Uh, I'm gonna say it's. Um, this week, I guess I'm looking at the wrong one. Yeah, so the very bottom of the list on the the vocab list this week for uh, from chapter nine. Uh, pistos will be one that you'll remember because there's so many other words that are almost exactly like it. That means some faith is pistis, so that's the noun form. Uh, and then pistuo is I am faithful or I believe. So that that root pissed. Hey, hey. Sorry, mate. It's all good. We're just getting into the homework now. So. That makes the first one on the list make so much more sense. The, yeah, the first one on the list is faithful. Uh, good. Let's go for a little bit tougher one. Number seven. What's that one? Uh, so, so, um, it's, that is, uh, uh, dative, uh, neuter. It's, yeah. Oh, no. 
Dative uh, feminine. Dative feminine. Singular or plural? Uh, plural. Plural. From what word? Guessing the masculine singular to be uh, OS. It's a good guess, but it's wrong. Because uh, you gotta know your, your vocab. Uh, entale is a noun, it means commandment or command. So, uh, so it's a f feminine. Uh, it's a feminine noun. It's, so that's where you, you gotta know your, your adjectives from your nouns. I'll tell you what the yeah, because yeah, when you get a little bit further, the parsing will he'll be mixing up nouns and verbs in the parsing, so you gotta really know your yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I was, I told Jonathan this already, but six, uh, four of our six have dropped out. Oh, so. Okay, so what do you want to do? I'm we we already decided we're still gonna keep going and, and okay. do it, and if you. I mean, I know so I'm not taking here. the test, but I, I still like to just monitor it, if that's all right. Yeah, okay. Uh, we'll still be meeting every every Sunday at 2, so. Okay. Yeah, I was over at Kirk and Dahl in Spring Cypher, so traffic. What page is exercise nine on? 23. 23. Uh, let's do one more parsing. Let's do... Number ten. That that would be a nice tricky one. Uh, yeah. uh, Take it out of the screen. Uh, it's either uh, accusative, plural, feminine, or it's uh, using the uh, the pattern. It could be genitive, singular. Uh, Good. Uh, so yeah, you gotta know your you gotta know what what the vocab word is to to tell, right? So if it's an eta pattern or if it's an alpha pattern uh, noun, then you know that from the vocab because you know the the word. Uh, it's a funky word though. Uh, the lexical form is the Genitive plural. All which alone. Which number? Number ten. Number ten. So all alone is because it never appears in the singular. It's only got plural meanings. It means one another. Right. So, so yeah, accusative plural, neuter. Would be. So yeah, you see. Neuter. The, does that mean like without or? What does neuter mean? Neuter is just if you think of it as as the third gender. Okay. Uh, I just didn't know yeah. that if that's in English where we got our word neuter from. No, no. Um, not, it yeah, it, it means, I guess you could say without gender. Without, or neutral. okay, okay, that's why we say neuter, okay. Uh, yeah, the gender neutral words. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, you see that os ending and you go, okay, that's either plural neuter because it's toss or ton or it's genitive uh, singular with an alpha pattern right but yeah so but then you know the word all alone you go oh yeah okay that'll be since it can't be a singular it's got to be neuter uh steven i just have a question even though yeah. i'm not really taking this you know for credit is okay no, if i still speak absolutely up? yeah okay. <laughs> Yeah, well, did you have one? Or? No, no, I mean, just in case I do. Okay. Because I know Jonathan is in it. Right. Hi. And uh, I don't want to take up his space. No. Yeah. That's okay. Uh, you and me, Jonathan. I'm here to teach you guys Greek as much as I can, so. Yeah. Uh, let's go to a few of the warm ups. We can start with the first one letter alpha. Hapistas doulas. But the blank is faithful. The plank is faithful, the but blank. now you now you know that that pistos is is faithful, and doulos. You gotta look up in your your vocab. It's on page seventy. If you look it up. I'm gonna make you do the work.
Or no, in the, in the grammar. In the grammar book? Yeah. And a helpful hint when you're doing it, this is what I do with whenever I'm learning languages, I just go in and put tabs on the vocab of oh, each of my... of each chapter? Yeah, so oh, I can... That's a good idea. Flip to the vocab easily. Good useful. Okay. So, do loss means the slave is faithful, but servant is faithful. Does yeah. Okay. Servant or slave. It means servant or slave. Uh, what adjective position is it? Uh, first one. Right. Attributive. Yeah. So how would that translate into English? Uh, so there would have to be. Um, Oh, this one's not the first one because it doesn't have two. Although I put this one, but I might have gotten it wrong because I didn't know what the first one. Oh, I mean, so it is. It is that. So it'd be uh, the faithful slave instead of yeah, slave. the faithful slave. Because uh, that's first attributive position, right? You're, it's the the magnet, the trapped trapped version of the attributive position. So. Okay, so the faithful. Yeah, the adjective is there in between the article and the noun. Uh, good. Uh, let's do letter epsilon. Okay. It's a nice little one. Right? So that is also uh, attributed. So it's the blank word. Logon is the noun, right? Yes, logon is the noun. You know, emon, then you're going to guess it's it's an adjective based on, on the yeah. construction. Article, noun, article, adjective. Uh, and then you got to go find it. It's also on page 70. On page 7, in here? Yeah. What's emon mean? Uh, my or mine? Yeah, there you go. So, my word? No. My word, yeah. Okay. If you want to get rid of that, it'll be the word of the me. But so, yeah. tav is word. Uh, logon is word. Logon so. is word. So, oh, ton, is, logon. Is the, the word? Of, yes, ton um, is, is the, the the, the definite article. Yeah, the article. Uh, the and noun then is? Lo logon is the noun, logos. so that's word. And then ton emon, that tells you that the adjective is describing that noun. Oh, okay. Because same case number gender. Okay. Uh, and then, and you know it's the, what is that, second attributive position? Article noun, article adjective. So, me or my. Uh, so yeah, my word. Uh, Oh, beta is a good one. So this be a good. So remember that not you're not always dealing with the nominative and the accusative cases. You, should, you got dative and genitives in there that you got to be able to work your adjectives in that way. So this is a dative case adjective construction. So anybody, you want to try this one, Sue? <laughs> no, I mean, okay. if you can help me through it, yeah. Yeah, well, sound it out for me first. Oh, I can't. Okay. <laughs> I can't. I'm sorry. Okay, well, I'll, I'll sound it out with with you. Everybody okay. sound it out. Te. Tene. Just te. 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 Tree. Te. Te. Hey. Oh, it's hey? Yeah. Oh. Uh, rough breathing mark. And oh, yeah. Ada makes that long A sound. Okay. So. Hey Mara. Hey Mara is a good word to to force you to it's got lots of those letters that that look like English letters that don't sound the same. So A instead of N and M even though it looks like a U and R even though it looks like a P. So. I just have to go over the individual alphabet and the sounds again. Yeah. Because it's like English. If I know the sounds in Greek, I just Blend them together like English. Yeah. Okay. Just sound them all out, uh, and that's that's key. You can practice reading it and get used to to sounding out the words. Because if you don't, if you're not comfortable reading the the letters together, then you you just get lost. 
Well, exactly. That's how I feel now. But yeah. even on, was it? Did you tell me about a YouTube, or I just found it on YouTube, where it does have the uh, oral pronunciation? Oh yeah. Of the letters. So. That's good. Yeah, use that. Use use anything you can find to. Okay. Immersing in. Yeah. Are in you the getting language. the sounds, Jonathan? Yeah. So this is Te Trite Hemera. Uh, yeah. Try this one. Well, it's dative. So it's, dative. Uh, with, in, to. I, I don't know either of those words, so that was about as far as I got. Okay. Uh, where is. Tritos is in this chapter, so I'll let you look that one up, and I'll give you a Hemera. As in, the same chapter is based on Yep. They're organized alphabetically. Yeah. Third. Yeah, third. Tritas is third. And then Hemera means day. So. So, like, uh, in the third day. There you go. In the third day. Because this is, again, this is an attributive position. Trite is the adjective. It's trapped in between the article and the noun. So, in the third day. Uh, if this were predicate position, if third were outside of the article... So are you be, saying it's an adjective? Yeah, trite. Is an adjective. Is an okay. adjective. And then... That's so this it. is article, article adjective noun. Now. Okay. Or outside would be the day is third? Yeah. Yeah, or on, yeah the day is third. Uh, so yeah. You, and context would clear that up as to what you mean by saying that. But... Uh, Let's try with some of the fuller sentences. Um, I'm try. Okay, I'm five minutes. Let's do number five. That's a good one. All right. All right, so let's break this up. Let's look at the first phrase up to the comma first. So okay. sound this out with me. Me, me. Nico, Nico. Hupa, Hupa, tu, tu. Kaku. Kaku. So me, Nico, Hupa, tu, Taku. Uh, so Nico means conquered? Yeah, Nico means be conquered. So it gives you the, the translation that Isn't heard. that a proper noun for, in a Greek male's name? Yeah. Oh, okay, I mean, that's what it translates. I never knew what it translated to. Yeah. If, uh, and you, word, names always have meaning, so mm -hmm. it's, okay. the name Miko means victory, or victory. victorious, oh, okay. conqueror. Conqueror. That'd be a good superhero name. Yeah. That'd be, yeah. Nicholas. Nicholas. It's victory of the people. Oh, okay. Nico Laos. So that's why you see it in Greek names. Okay. Uh, so, may, may is the negation. So, ne may is one of those words that means not. There's three or four different ways to say not in Greek. May, Nico, means what? Uh, so not conquered. Not to be conquered. Maybe. Yeah. Or don't be conquered. Okay, don't be conquered. Like, be, be not conquered. Okay, hupa tu kaku. There's a the in there. And Correct. There is a the in there. Uh, we'll parse that. To parse two kaku for me. Uh, genitive singular. Genitive singular. So uh, it could be of or from. Correct. Uh, what does hupa mean? I don't know. I don't know. What kind of part of speech is hupa? Any guesses? Think of what we've gone over. We've gone over nouns, adjectives, and prepositions, and articles. Adjective. Is so it an adjective? Could be an adjective. You're thinking it's probably not a noun, right? Because yeah. it doesn't have a noun ending. Right. It's, uh, it's a descriptive word. Um, could also be meaning? preposition. Preposition. Oh, preposition. So that's kind of how you work through it. It's like, this doesn't have a, a common noun ending, right? There's no... Right. So it doesn't seem to be a part of... Correct. So that kind of clues you in. Okay. Preposition. 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 So you flip over to your chapter on prepositions. And 
you say, uh, is the coupa in the vocab for prepositions. I think it's on page 62. Oh, thank you. Remember, prepositions have can have multiple ending endings based on the, the case that they're being used with. So we already said this is tukaku is a genitive. So when hupa is used with a genitive, what does it mean? What's the translation? Under, by, it's by, it's genitive. It's by, yeah. So by tukaku, by the evil or by evil. You can, so be not conquered by evil. Me niko hupa tukaku. No, because remember when you when you have a preposition, you drop that translation word. Uh, so yeah, be not conquered by evil. Allah means but. Really, Allah means yeah. but. Hmm. Sound that this one for me. Nika in to agatho ta kakon. N kakon. That's one of those ones that looks like a V, but it's not. It's yeah, it's a new. It's got a n sound. So, ala nika en to agatho ta kakon. But conquer in and that's the uh, dated probably masculine. Uh, that's good. Right. So that'll be uh, conquer in good, maybe? Yeah, conquer in, or in is a really flexible word. By would probably be. Could be by. Uh, but look at to agatho ta kakon. Okay. You've got. In good, the evil. So conquer evil with good. Yeah, so yeah, you use your biblical knowledge to say, oh yeah, I remember this verse. Do not <laughs> conquer. Do not be conquered by evil, but overcome evil, evil with good. Uh, but tell me, do do to do to kaka, do to agatho and takakon are they the same? Do they match case number and gender? No. No. What's takakon? Uh, it's the evil. Yeah. Uh, what's the uh, sorry? What's the parse it? No. Um, case number and gender of it. So it's to, but the ending is different. Uh, it's yeah. It's ta. Yeah. Cock on. Uh, that, but if you parse the article, that'll tell you what. Is it singular? Singular, yeah. Um, masculine. Uh, yeah, masculine, neuter, uh, nominative, singular. Singular. It is neuter. Okay. And okay. So it's singular, neuter. And it's nominative. Remember, your your pattern word is ergon, ta ergon. So yeah, the the nominative uh, oh, article. That's why the ending would. Correct. That's why it, it looks like it doesn't match, but it does. The okay. article and the and the the article matches the the word there. So it's that's a neuter, singular, nominative, and to agatho is dative, singular. Since they don't match case, they're both acting as what kind of adjectives? Attributive, substantival, or predicate? Predicate. Uh, substantival. Substantival. Oh, predicate would be more or like a verb. Yeah, it's the predicate is the is. Is right. Substantive. Okay. So since they don't have a, they don't have any nouns to describe. That's how you know they're substantive. Yeah. They're both acting like in English the good, the bad, and the ugly. That's how they're so. But conquer. By the good, the evil. So you'd have to, you know, take it out of the Yoda speak and, and put it in. Okay, conquer the evil in the good by the good. In, uh, in this case, the evil this would be one of those uh, ones where if that one was like masculine, it could be interpreted by man's evil. Correct. Or it, if it were if it were masculine, it would be. Conquer the evil man yeah. by the good. It's yeah, since it has that gender associated with it, you can okay. It's describing an evil.
man, or if it were a feminine, okay, it's the evil woman with the good. But yeah, since it's neuter, we just, the evil, we'll leave it like that. Let's translate one more, and then we'll get into verbs. Yeah, we can do number six. It's, it's, yeah, because that's a short. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that was it. Don't be conquered by evil, like but don't co- evil conquer evil with. And with good. Uh, number six. Esantai hoi eskatoi protoi kai hoi protoi eskatoi. Even if you don't even don't know it, the meaning of any of these words, you recognize there's a parallel thing going on, right? You got the same word, es- uh, yeah, eschatai, protoi, protoi, eschatoi. Oh. Uh, so, it get, kind of gives you a clue as how it's going to be constructed. Let's look at the first one first. See, when you see a kai, mm-hmm. it's a good indication that'll probably be a break in the sentence or a different phrase, the word and. Right? So, Look at esantai uh, hoi eskatoi protoi. Is there a noun in the nominative there? It tells you what the subject of the sentence is. Uh, it's not uh, Correct. Eskatoi is not a noun. That's the first word. Eskatoi. Eskatoi is the second word. The second word. Uh, esantai is that first word. So, yeah, that would be the noun. I don't know that word, but the other two are not nouns. Correct, they are not nouns. But are they in the nominative? Mm. No. Those two? They're both plural nominatives. They're both plural nominative adjectives. That's so, one secret from the two. Yeah, so, hoi eskatoi and protoi are all plural nominative adjectives. Uh, Esantai, he, he gives you the translation of a footnote, so you got to watch the footnotes if you, if you see it in your book, number six, Esantai, and then a little number four. Mm-hmm. So you drop down to the fourth footnote, and it, it says, they will be a form of Amy. So They will be is what that means. Uh, hoi eskatoi protoi. Last, and what, this is first or earlier. This, yeah, first. So this is, a, this is a fun one to, so remember what type of adjectives are there? Attributive, substantive, one predicate, right? How is the last acting? Uh, it's in between, so it's uh, attributive. Is, is it in between anything, though? Is there a noun that it's describing? Is it predicate? It's the uh, substantive. Substantive. There's no noun, right? Oh, okay, no noun. So there's there's no noun for it to describe, so it's acting substantively. Is it acting as a noun? Yeah, it's acting like a noun. Okay. That's what, yeah, substantive means it's pretending to be a noun. Right. It's both the last. They're both substantive. Yeah. Okay. So you got two substantival adjectives here, one with the article, one without. So how do you know which one goes first? Answer is the one that has the article. So this, this is one of the, like I was saying, there's the, you can get more advanced with how adjectives work. So this is kind of a glimpse of it. Yet both of these would be parsed the same way. How do we know which one is the subject of the sentence? The one that has the article. So, hoi eskatoi so is the subject. Is, okay, so eskatoi is the is the subject. Is the subject right? Okay, cool. Because it has an article. Right Correct. Before it. Cool. Got it. It's hoi eskatoi, and then the verb. They will be so, the last, the last ones. They will be mm-hmm. protoi, which means first. First, so first. the last will be first. And we've already done these translating, but first. we've got the same same construction. But which one has the article now? The, that one. Yeah, protoi. Yeah. So you flip it. It's got this parallel. So first will be. Exactly. Because it has an article before it. 
Yes, because it has the article Before. attached to it. Okay. Uh, another question, though, where's the where's the verb in the second phrase? Um, it's, does it use the one from the very beginning? Yeah. Okay. This is a. Oh, oh, I see. Is that the end then? It's well. It's not there. It's implied. Oh, it's implied because so of this, the beginning. Yeah. This is context tells you. So you, you know it's a parallelism. So okay. to literally translate this, you'd go, uh, the last will be first and the first last. But you mentally substitute in right. will be. Right. Because we know how that parallels, or it's parallelism works. Or insinuated. Yeah. yeah. Okay. In the context. So, so when I translate this, it, first of all, you break it up right. into your two sections. And then right. The last will be first and the first will be last. Got it. Uh, these will all be on the website, so you can if you go through and do the exercise, you can check your, your answers. And, and uh, there's a really long one, number nine, I think. Number eight. Number eight is number eight. smaller than number nine. Yeah. yeah, so what I did on the PowerPoint was I broke it down into phrases for you and kept the white ones. Oh, nice. So you can... You can use that to try and go phrase by phrase. Uh, I'll help you, help you with that. But uh, is this a hard language to learn? Like, yeah, it is it's hard. one of the tougher ones. Yeah, okay. mostly for grammar reasons. There's just a lot. Yes. There's a lot you gotta. You just have to work through and get comfortable with before you can start using it. The grammar's the part I have better though. That was always my grammar favorite, Grammar is what is your favorite? Grammar is the part that I have down. Oh, you have down. It's the vocab that I struggle with. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would struggle with the grammar. Just where things are placed. I was like him. Like, I had the grammar pretty quick, uh -huh. but I have trouble remembering okay. vocab. I see. Uh, interesting how our brains... Yeah. <laughs> Alright, we got 20 minutes. We're going to get into verbs. It. Yeah. Alright. First of all, verbs in English. So, think of think of verbs in English, how they work. We're going to try and break down and look at some of the the unique things of how they work. And here, are the, these are the notes for today. So you can, oh, thank you. you. I was going to say, I'm looking for them. Thank uh, you so much. First of all, verbs in English have, we have parsing components just like they do in Greek. Uh, they're just, when, the way that we communicate those things is by adding extra words. Uh, the way the Greek communicates it is by changing the ending of the word. So it's more compact, more efficient almost. But uh, So for example, parsing components in English, person, we have first, second, and third person. I is first person, second person is you, third person is he, she, it. Uh, number, just like with the nouns, we only do singular or plural. Uh, I, you, he, she, it would all be singular. But we, y'all, they would be plural for verbs. And then tense in English, this is going to be the one that gets funky when we get to Greek. Tense is, is a little bit different, but in English, we have past, present, and future, right? The way we communicate those is, again, adding different words. So, example sentence, Bill hit the ball. Mm -hmm. That's present. Mm -hmm. Or, excuse me, that's past. Mm -hmm. Bill hit the ball, past tense. Present tense, make it clear, he's doing it right now, is Bill hits the ball. Or we might use the participle, Bill is hitting the ball let you know that's happening now, present tense. Uh, future tense, we add the word will. Bill will hit the ball. For future. Mm -hmm. uh, in Greek, what they'll do is they'll change the ending of the word to let you know past, present, or future, etc. Uh, other parsing components of English. These are ways that we communicate these ideas. Voice, active and passive voice. If you're a writer, you know about this. You want to write in the active voice. It's more punchy and easier to read. Right? So, Bill hit the ball is active. The, the subject is the one doing the verb. Okay? Passive voice is when the subject is the one receiving the verb. So Bill was hit by the ball. Again, we communicate that by adding more words. Uh, it's very different. You're saying something very different when you're saying Bill hit the ball versus Bill, hit, Bill was hit by the ball. Aspect or kind of action. This is one that's harder to communicate in English, but this is one that, this is where, so this right here, I mean, look up at the screen, aspect, kind of action, that is what 
is hard for most people to wrap their minds around in Greek verbs, is the kind of action that's going on. Uh, in English, we have, we have th these are some examples that you come up with more, but continuous action, like something that was going on and happening. Bill was hitting the ball. Like it was, it was, it was happening, and it was, it was, it was a progressive thing. It went, spanned over a period of time, and it was continuous. Completed action. Uh, for that same sentence, we might try and he hit the ball once. Like it's in the past tense, and it stopped, and and then he did it. It was completed. Versus undefined. Bill hit the ball. We don't really know if it's know continuous, where. completed, right. what kind of action it was. was it, did it happen in the past tense, and it was, was it like this punctiliar thing? What, did it happen in the past tense, and did it have present consequences? Uh, these are things that we have to add more words to try and communicate. Another thing that we have in English that we communicate by adding words is mood. Uh, three examples of this would be indicative, subjunctive, and imperative. So... An indicative example would be Bill hit the ball. Indicative mood is just saying, this is the thing that happened. This happened. Yeah. It's the, you might call it the mood of reality. It's, this is, this took place. It's suggestion. description, almost. Suggestion Sub is, is suggesting? E yeah, close. It's, it's, the, it's the mood of possibility. Okay, possibility. So uh, Bill might have hit the ball. Wait. How, how close to reality is it? Like, he, he could hit the ball. Mm -hmm. He might have done it. He might not have. It was possible. Uh, imperative is like the, the commanding mood. Bill, hit the ball. You, you, Bill must hit the ball. You, forcing it is to command. So Bill, go hit the ball. would be another way to we commit, communicate the imperative mood. Mm -hmm. Again, with mood... The way that you communicate mood in Greek is you, you change the ending. So all of these things are communicated in Greek by slightly changing the ending or the spelling of a word. So it's always the ending? Or the, the begin the, the of the word. The, yeah, the, the way the word is spelled. You'll have right. the stem of the word and right. then letters around it That's to communicate like English, something. Whether different. we uh, you know have a Y or E D? Yes. Okay. So, these verbs are, are the complicated part of Greek. Verbs are where most people are, are hitting themselves in the head, confused. So just, just keep, stay, stay, stay care, calm and, and soldier on through. We'll, we'll have manageable chunks. Uh, verbs in Greek have all those same parsing components. So first, first second, and third person. Again, you communicate that by the ending. Uh, number, singular or plural. Right. It's, if the verb it tells you that multiple people are doing it, multiple people received it, uh, it's going to be plural. Uh, it has voice, active, middle, and passive. And notice that middle is something we don't have in English, so it's a little bit hard to communicate. We have either active or passive. Correct. We do not have middle. We do so not have middle. middle. Be kind of undefined. Sort of, yeah. Middle is, is like, is, is things that you... The, the subject intrinsically does the verb to himself. Uh, you think of, uh, I dressed. The verb to dress is kind of, a, it's you dress yourself. So you might say, he dressed, and you'd say it in the middle voice to indicate he dressed himself. Like, okay. it wasn't somebody else doing it. Very, yeah, it's not as common. To, to see the middle he, voice. If he said, if he, said he dressed by himself, would that still be the middle voice? Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you'd probably still put it into the middle, middle voice, voice. In, okay. in Greek. Again, this, this is one that's hard to come across in English, and often you lose that when you're translating because we just don't have a really effective way of communicating it. I have a question. Yeah. So is it easier to grasp um, the Greek by not trying to constantly translate it into English? <laughs> I know it's kind of, uh, you know, because when we're looking at it, we're trying to. After your first year of Greek, yes. Okay, when you're so 
so saturated with it, yeah. you won't need to. Yeah, once you get comfortable once the need is done. The, the, with the parts uh-huh. and how they work, right. you start taking your mind out of the, the English equivalent kind of thinking. Because that's what slows me down, because I'm always trying to translate it back into English. Yeah. And English rules, too. Yeah, and for now, that's okay. That's, okay. that's yeah, good. You, you'll get lost if you try and just sure. throw yourself entirely into a completely different okay. system of thinking. But okay. You think of your English parallels for now, and uh-huh. then as you get more comfortable with it, try and try and drop those English parallels as you as you use it more. Thank you, you for clarifying that. Yeah. Uh, there are four moods in Greek, and kind of these we have these in English. They're not really moods, but they get treated like moods because uh-huh. we don't know what to call them exactly. But indicative, subjunctive, imperative, optative is the mood of. Uh, probability instead of possibility. So it's, it's one step closer to reality. Bill will probably hit the ball. Yeah, Bill will probably hit the ball. Uh, so is, say it again, optative? Optative. Optative, is that, is that more of, even though it's a probability, does that come to conclusion too? Don't, don't know. Okay. It's it's, I, it's probability. Yeah, exactly. I'm just trying to match to see if probability could be in any way associated with conclusion. Yeah, probably not. Okay. It might, yeah, and you might, and this is, those are where you get into your exegesis, where you start trying to draw more conclusions about, okay, what is he saying when he puts it into the optative mood? Is he is he saying something, adding something different, nuance kind of a thing? In here, we won't get past the indicative. Uh, indicative mood is all we're going to be looking at, the, the mood of statement. This thing happened or is happening. Uh that's what the the vast majority of Greek is written in the indicative mood. The same way that the vast majority of English is spoken in the indicative mood. You just talk about things that are happening. Uh, philosophy would be the, the subjunctive mood, right? You talk about how things might be. But, oh, that's true. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, indicative. For now, that's all the all you need to worry about. I'm just giving you the the bird's eye look at these are all the different components that are working in your verbs. Oh, that's good. Thank you. Uh, Tense. So this is, again, I remember I told you, tense was different in Greek. Tense, in English, just refers to time. Did it happen in the past, present, or future? Okay. Hey, Jerry. Hi. Right. Tense in Greek involves the aspect with it. So you have past, present, and future, and aspect? Correct. So the tenses in Greek, here's, here are the tenses. Present, imperfect, perfect, aorist, future, and pluperfect. All these big words that don't mean anything yet, right? Present is 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 much like the English present. It's saying saying, saying something that happened. Uh, imperfect, perfect, and aorist are all past time, but they have different aspects. Okay, so the imperfect is past time and continuous aspect. It's something that happened in the past and it was going on. Bill was hitting the ball. Would be the past time continuous aspect thing. Aorist is past time and undefined aspect. It's just saying so Bill had it. Uh, that would be perfect. Uh, oh, because it was completed. It's completed. Perfect would be past time completed action. Aorist would just be Bill hit the ball. We're not saying whether or not it was continuous or completed or what kind of aspect it was. So just the fact that undefined. It's in past time doesn't really matter. Kind of. Like yes, yeah. it's, it's called past time, but it could just as easily be present time. Well, you're for sure saying that it's that the action took place in the past. The question is, did did it continue? Is it did it continue up to the present? Is it still going on? So you would have to use context. For you. Yeah, context will, will clue you into that. And if, if you, the easiest way to think of aorist is like our simple past tense. <coughs> Imperfect is is like, I think of it as the formal past tense. It's like the, it, it's saying that something that was happening. Formal? Uh, you said formal? The formal, past? formal past tense. Oh, okay. And perfect is something that happened and completed, and you might argue also has, has present effects. Okay. So he wrote the book. Uh, that would, he, you'd probably say that in the perfect tense, because we have the book here. We can see that he wrote it. And now we can read the book and do things like it. It's got present effects from that past completed action. So, whereas in perfect tense, what he was writing the book, right? It's that continuous aspect, 
past tense still, past time. So tense in Greek is, just remember, it's got time and aspect or kind of action wrapped up in it. And then future is a lot like what we'll think of as our simple future tense, saying something that's going to happen. Uh, don't need to worry about too perfect yet. Uh, again, this is overview. So going through all of these different tenses will take us multiple weeks. So this week, all we're going to look at is present active indicative. So okay. present tense, something that is going on in the present time. So time and aspect is present. Active voice, so the subject is the one doing the verb. And indicative mood. Uh, we're always going to be looking at the indicative mood. So for right now, that's the only mood you need to worry about. When you're parsing your, your verbs, you'll there's a lot of components, right? We just went through all of them. There's person, number, voice, mood. Mood, you got. Mood is indicative. But you got to figure out the rest based on what it looks like. Uh, I know that was a lot. That was bird's eye view. You kind of got understand the, the concepts behind those words. Yeah. We're going to spend the next few weeks digging into those concepts. So. What should we practice most for next week? Present active indicative. We're about to go through that. Okay. So. Is that in homework in the homework next week? Yes. Okay. And a little, something a little bit funky about homework, but we'll get to okay. there. Uh, the other thing, remember back to your nouns, uh, the parts of a Greek word. Stem, c case ending, and maybe a connecting vowel. Right? We talked about you can treat it like this is the entire ending, or uh, the connecting vowel is separate. Mounts likes to treat the connecting vowel as separate. So. And that's a verb that's up there. Right? Correct. So the, and this is a slide just from back when we did it in, in now. So you guys are comfortable with stem and case ending, yeah. what that, that concept is. Uh, this is the present active indicative of Luo. Luo is your paradigm word. So the tense stem, lu, l, lambda, lambda, upsilon. It means loose, to loose would be the infinitive form of that. Uh, it's <clears throat> the reason we use that as the, the paradigm word is because it's regular. It doesn't have as many funky things going on, the things you have to remember, and it's really short. So you can plug it in easily. So the, you're going to see charts like this a lot. It'll have person over on the left. It'll have number up on the top, singular and plural. And it'll tell you in the top left corner what it is, what kind of verb it is. Present active indicative is what this one is. So present tense, active voice, indicative mood, first person singular, second person singular, third person singular. So you see how the chart works? Uh, and this is... Present active, and this is how you form the present active indicative verse. It's luo, lues, lue, luamen, luete, luusi, or lusin. Uh, if you just look at the endings, o, ace, a, amen, ete, usi. So you can memorize either one. Uh, I, I think it's easier to remember the whole verb. Luos, lue, lue, luo, lues, lue, luamen, luete, luusi. The translation of this would be, I loose, first person singular, present active, so I am the one who's loosing, singular, present tense. I loose, second person would be you loose, third person would be he looses, third person would, or uh, first person plural, we loose, y'all loose, they loose. So how is loose being used here? I read it as loose, but I... I read it wrong. Yeah, it, it means like release, untie, uh, destroy, shake up. And these are all within the semantic domain of the word, but okay. simplest to just loose, like to untie. I untie, you untie, he unties. So like in English, the verb always agrees with the subject. Correct. So same thing. Your, whatever your subject, when you 
find your nominative noun that tells you this is the subject of the sentence, mm -hmm. right? If it's singular, your verb is going to be singular. So it's got to match. It's got to line up with its noun that it's working with. Uh, some quirky things. Uh, the movable new. So you notice Lucy, I put parentheses around the new. Mm -hmm. Think of it like the word an or a in, in English. Sometimes you throw the n on there for smoother, smoother reading. Would this work the same way with vowels? And I'm not sure. <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, the, if you just remember Lucy, and then when you see an, a new, just remember, oh yeah, movable new. And I, and I think yes, but I don't think it's as hard and fast as, as with Ann. Like sometimes they just throw it on because some speakers just say... It just sounds better. Yeah, they just do it. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, the third person plural form of Luo could be Lucy or Lucin. Uh, depending on just how the writer wrote it. So when you're reading your Greek text and you come across it, you recognize it. Shh. Uh, the movable new doesn't change the meaning. So whether it's got a new on there or not, it still still means third person, plural, present active indicative of that verb. And then some we already talked about agreement. So uh, your noun has to agree with your verb. Verb always agrees with its subject, noun or pronoun, in person and number. So, Jesus like lue, English, just, just like, like English. in English, yeah. Jesus lue ton anthropon. Jesus loses the man. Third person singular, so third person singular. You would not say Jesus luomen ton anthropon. That would be Jesus, we lose the man. It doesn't. Your, your Greek speaker would go, well, you're not from around here, are you? <laughs> yeah. You don't know this language very well. Unless you were talking to Jesus, and you'd say, Jesus, like, we lost the man. Yeah. You'd, and you'd prob you probably wouldn't put it, Jesus in the nominative then. Mm -hmm. You'd use the vocative uh, direct address. Jesus. Luamen anthropon. We lose the man. Mm -hmm. uh, the subject and the verb don't agree, so the sentence makes no sense. Luamen is first person plural, we lose. But Jesus is third person singular. So. So when speaking it, do you not have to say the. 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 the article? Yeah. Yeah, the article uh, functions much more f for uh, telling you the kind of of word that it is more than functioning as the word the. It does do that. And I can't remember the word that, that Wallace used. God. Starts with the, I'll look it up. The article tells you more about what the, how the nouns and the adjectives are working okay. than it does tell you the word the is here. So it more often than not gets replaced. Yes, very often it'll get replaced. Lots of times, just in context, we just drop out the word the because we know that it's not talking about a single one. Okay. It's not acting as a, right. as, as a definitizer. Mm -hmm. it's, it's acting to let you know how nouns and, and verbs are, or, and our adjectives are working with each other. So when translating it to English, still use the the, but take it out if it doesn't make sense. Correct, okay. yeah. Yeah, you, you use context. So as, if the article's there, you go ahead and assume that it's singular, it's, it's acting as the word the, unless it just doesn't make sense in the context, in which case you remove it. Okay. <coughs> Did that track? Yeah. Yeah, it, it's, it's making a little more sense, especially. So yeah, we'll, we'll be going through, essentially next week we'll be, I think next week we're looking at imperfect. You know, next week we're looking at uh, contract verbs. So the following week we'll look at the present, uh, present middle passive verb. So the only thing that will change, the word active there will change to middle slash passive. Okay. Uh, we'll look at a different voice. So it'll take a while to, to work through these. So next week, but hint, hint, this is what the quiz is. It's your present active indicative luo paradigm. Luos, luo, luos, luo. By the end of, of Greek, you have this full sheet of paradigms. That, so I got into Greek 3, and we had to have it all memorized. And 
you have to know all of those, and you just you 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 use them and you get used to them. Uh, on the syllabus, we're one week behind, so you just do do whatever went with this lesson. I think it's last week's date, but this week. Thank you. Uh, the one last funky thing is we're doing track two. So in your grammar, if you're reading your grammar like you should be, you get to this page and it says track one or track two. Uh, are you going to do the chapters in order or are you going to do them out of order? What we're doing them out of order. It's page 73. So that would be in the homework you would then skip to. Yeah, so in the workbook, you flip to the back section. And see how it says, exercise 21, track 2. Okay. It tells you which track it is. So you need to use your syllabus. Your syllabus tells you exactly what page and exactly what chapter we're okay. going over that week. I'll text you if I have any questions. Yeah, and you can always text me. Okay, great. Thank you.